All right, so our last sections that we're going over, we're going to combine into one. It's 14, 4, and 14, 5, which is our law sines and law cosines. So we're going to be doing both of them here and also talking about an area formula. So we're going to start off with this area formula, but we're going to be looking at law sines and cosines, which this is going to be dealing with if we don't have a 90 degree angle and a triangle. So if we're not dealing with right triangles, then what are we dealing with here? So this is an area formula. K is equal to the area. So this is if you want to find the area of a triangle, but you do not have a right angle or you don't have the height. So if you remember, the area of a triangle is always one half base times height. If you're not given the height, but you know the measures of the angles and the sides, you'd be able to find what the area is still. And to do that, you need to use a trig function. Again, sine. Make sure your calculator is in degrees. Again, you can check that by going sine of 90 should get you one. If it doesn't, then you're not in degrees. So then you wrote mode and you change it over. So the formula is one half A times C times sine of B. And so to find the area, what you're doing is you're taking two of the sides and then you're also taking the angle that's in between those two sides. Okay, So if I use AC, I have to use angle B. If I wanted to use if I wanted to use, let's say, C, angle C, I'd have to use side A and side B. Okay. Okay. So if I wanted to use angle C, I'd have to use sides A and B. If I wanted to use angle A, I'd have to use sides B and C. So it's the two sides that create the angle are the ones you have to use in this formula. Okay. All right. So. We have a triangle here, 21 inches, 67 degrees, and 16 inches. I want you to find the area of this. So take a second, find the area of it. Remember, it's 1 half AC times sine of B. All right, so when you set this up, you should have 1 half. You should have 1 half times 21 times 16 times the sine of 67. And you should end up with your answer of, once you've reduced everything down, um, well, 1 half times 21 times 16 is 168 sine 67, and then sine 67 times 168 is 154.65 inches squared. So that would end up being your area for this. Okay, So it is, again, just plugging into a formula and going through. Now if it is a right triangle, we'd have sine of 90, which what is the sine of 90? It is 1. So you could use this with a right triangle and a right angle. And you know that the sine of that would be 90, which plugged in will get you your answer. So for the most part, your area should end up being smaller than 1 half base times height using those same sides. Okay, so now law signs. Law signs is used to find any missing angle or side if you're given a si certain situation. So law signs is basically a proportion. The sine of the angle A divided by the side A is equal to the sine of angle B divided by the side B is equal to the sine of angle C divided by the side C. And as you notice, A, B, and C, as they're related to their angles, they're all opposite each other. So the sine of an angle divided by its opposite side will always be equal to all the other angles divided by their opposite sides. And that proportion is always true. So with this, all you need is you need one set of opposite, an angle and its opposite side, and then one other side or angle, and you can find the missing part. Okay. For the most part, you're just going to need just two of them. You don't need all three to solve these. So you just need one or two pairs or one pair and then one part of the next one okay, to find it. So this proportion setup will always work with our law signs and law. So let's say we have this and we want to find our missing parts. So we want to find our missing parts of, of this triangle. Now for this, what we'd want to do is we want to say, okay, where can we use the law signs first off? And so we want to see, do we have an angle and its opposite side? Do we know those? And in this case, yes, we do. We do have an angle and its opposite side, so we can use the law of sines. And now we go, okay, what other part do we have? We know the other side is 12, so that means we have to find angle, which angle? Do we have to find angle A or angle B first? We have to find angle A. So we have to find angle A first, so we can set it up with this equation. 
uh, which this is set up for the whole thing. So we have sine of 85 over 18 is equal to sine of A over 12, which is equal to the sine of B over B. And as you see that these, we don't have any variables or any numbers right now, we can't really do anything with it. So we're going to focus on the first two. And so we have sine 85 over 18, sine A over 12. Now once you have this, all it is is it's a cross multiplication because it's a proportion. So cross multiply then divide. So 18 times sine A is equal to 12 times sine 85 because we're cross multiplying. And then I divided both sides by 18. And so now I have sine A is equal to 12 sine 85 all over 18. When you go 12 times sine 85 divided by 18, you end up with 0 0.64. To get rid of the sine, you have to do the inverse sine. So you take the inverse sine of both sides, and you get your angle of uh, 41.656 degrees. Okay, so that's the angle A. Okay, so now once we have that angle, so once we know angle A, we can find angle B by just finding what the missing angle is. A triangle has to have a sum of 180 degrees. So if we know two of the angles now, 41.62, depending on how you round it, okay, we're able to find B. And just by solving it algebraically, we're able to find that B is 53.38 degrees. And now we set up another proportion. And if you look at this, I'm going back and using the original two that I started with. And the reason for that is because I know those are right. You don't want to use an answer that you got just in case it was incorrect. So you always want to use the information that was provided that you know is true. So sine of 85 over 18 is equal to sine of 53.38 all over B. And again, we are cross multiplying and solving. So cross multiplying and solving, so we got B sine 85 is equal to 18 sine 53.38. Uh, divide both sides by sine 18. Type those into your calculator and you end up with an answer of B is equal to about 14.5 inches. Okay. And again, it, there is rounding, so if you got 14.42 or whatever, it's probably still okay because um, there is some rounding on these. Okay, okay so that's the law of sines, which is just setting up a proportion. Okay, so now we're looking at our law of cosines. So our law of cosines, which there's three formulas here, but they're really only one. I just have it set up different ways so that you, if you need to, so that you don't have to adjust it. So uh, C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2AB times the cosine of C. One thing that you notice with all three of these equations is that the side that you're trying to find is always the same as the opposite angle. Okay, so the side you're trying to find is always the same as the opposite angle. That first column and that last column, the letters are always the same. And that what needs that's what needs to be true. When you're dealing with a law of cosines, you do not need the opposite angle or opposite sides. Okay. Um, what you need though is you need kind of three in a row. So you need two sides, side C and B, and then the included angle A or you need C and A and the included angle B, or you need A and B and the included angle C. So what you need is that you need to have kind of three in a row. You need two sides and the angle that's included, and then you can find the opposite side of this. Okay? This is usually more for finding the sides of them than uh, the other two angles for them. Okay? So if you have both these equations, you have the law of sines and the law of cosines, you can use either one, whichever one fits better into your problem. Okay, so let's say we want to find our missing parts. So with this, the first thing that we want to do here is that we want to find our missing side, which would be A. So we want to find A first because then we can use that with the law of sines because we need an angle and its opposite side. And it's going to be easier to find A using our law of cosines than it is to find any other parts. So we set this up using our law of cosines. So this would be our setup. So we have A squared is equal to 22 squared plus 25 squared minus 2 times 22 times 25 times the cosine of 70 of 12.72. Okay, so now take a second. I want you to simplify this and find A. So find the length of A. Okay, so as you simplified it down, you should have gotten A squared is equal to 36. And then what you would do is you end up taking the square root of 36, which is 6. 
okay? And you should get about six. You might get a little bit of decimal depending on your rounding, but it should be around six should be your answer, okay? So that means our other side is six. So now that we have this side right here, now we have all three sides, and now we can go and find our angles. And to find our angles, we just end up using our law of sines. So we have our missing side, or we have our, um, we have our other side. And so in this case, how this is set up, you could use the law of sines, which is using uh, this cross and over, but this is going to be using the law of cosines because it's going to show you how to do it with the, how to find an angle, a missing angle with it. So remember that this A was six, okay? So now what we've done is we've set up with all the sides. So we have 22 squared, which is opposite our C, is equal to 25 squared plus C six squared, minus two times six times 25, times the cosine of C. And what we want to do is find C, okay? So as we simplify it all the way down, okay, you see we have it down to here, we end up with um, 484 is equal to uh, 661 minus 300 cosine C. We subtract 661 on both sides, gets us a negative uh, 117 equals a negative 300 C squared. Divide both sides by negative 300, gets us uh, 177 over 300. And then you take the inverse cosine of both sides. When you take the inverse cosine of both sides, you end up with a 53.5 or 84 degrees. And so that is our angle C. Okay. Now, if I know those two, find angle B for this. So find the missing angle that we have. So now your missing angle is just by setting it up as 12 plus B plus the 53 should equal 180 degrees, going through and B is equal to 113.44 degrees, okay, um, for that one, all right?